We're back. We made it to two episodes, Frank. We haven't been cancelled yet. <laughs> Give me five more ten minutes. <laughs> Change that. Welcome along and thanks for joining us, Cheltenham Countdown Extra. We're back. We made it to two episodes, Frank. We haven't been cancelled yet. <laughs> Give me five more ten minutes. <laughs> Change that. <laughs> thanks a million for watching. Myself, Patrick Canelli, and Frank Kiki are going to dissect what Rory Delargy, Ruby Walsh, and of course the brilliant host, Tom Nugent, went through on the Cheltenham Countdown podcast and of course show that's on the Paddy Power Racing YouTube channel. You can watch it right now. Probably ideal if you do before we dissect exactly what the lads said. First things first, how are you? I'm very well. Yeah? yeah? Very well. Okay. Anti-post portfolio is building nicely. It wasn't a bad weekend for it, no. Mm. Happy enough for us. Mm. We will get to exactly what. If you didn't lis uh, listen or watch last week, we'll tell you why. Before we get stuck into last week, Paddy Power Racing YouTube channel, which I hope you're watching this on. If you're not, you can do so. Loads of good stuff. The aforementioned Shelton Countdown as well as a really interesting episode of the Punters Panel. A good episode of the Punters Panel was Ruby, Nina Carberry, Joe Logue. You were, uh, Ruby got One a One of the great lines I think ever was that. Uh, Ruby was giving Tom awful abuse and it was something that had to do with heart monitors and hearts and stuff and Tom just goes, yeah, they have a heart too, unlike you, Ruby. <laughs> Absolute quality. And Ruby was happy with this. Did he laugh or did he just, you know, stony face? He didn't faced? really give yeah, much yeah, of a... Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Classic Ruby, yeah. Ruby being Ruby. He was he was epic Ruby, actually, in the uh, in the, in the the show we're going to dissect, uh, particularly giving out to Tom about the, the sponsors' names. I mean, come on, Ruby. <sighs> Oh they change so reg yeah, regularly exactly. now, it's very hard to keep up. Take a break. Sure, it's still the RSA chase and the Sun Lions hurdle to me. All right, okay, we're, 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 we're going down <laughs> on, on a tangent. A reminder, we are non-runner money back on the Chatland Festival, so the prices will be quoting. We went that on, I think it was Friday, didn't we go non-runner money back? Yes. All right, okay, so, and you were part of the compiling team. Did you see an uptake in business straight away? Is that like a lot of people are waiting for I it? I was actually off Friday, Saturday, oh, Sunday, Monday, so my first day back. Pure by chance, delighted. Happy days. That's a, that's a handy one to be. I'm assuming it was very busy, obviously with all the Cheltenham yeah. races over the weekend. Yeah, Lossy made it. It's a going? lot of work putting those markets together and building them again. So, okay. fair play to Dan Collins for doing most of the heavy lifting there. Shout out Dan, who usually puts himself off for that particular task. So, so oh no, he did a great job, a mighty job. Come on, Dan Collins of the training team. So, Tom Nugent, freshly shaved. He's obviously listening oh, to the feedback. He, he looked immaculate. He, I could nearly smell the aftershave through the screen. He was that clean. <laughs> he opened the show by <laughs> telling us it was going to be the Arkell chase, the Gold Cup and the Turner's Novice chase, which Ruby ripped apart straight away. And lo and behold, thus proving that he doesn't actually watch the Cheltenham Countdown Extra. He was actually very complimentary about you, Frank, uh, because of this very tip that you put up on our own show last week. But for me, I just thought, like, you know, you're looking at Sir Gerhard at 12s and you're looking at 33 Noble Yates. You're like... No one late's a far sexier bet. Sexy bets, Frank. Sexy we do, bets. we do like sexy bets. Noble Yates, of course, winning the cleave. Did you actually back him to win the cleave as well? Uh, no, like separate bets, like to, yeah. I backed him for the cleave. Just, I suppose I was looking at. I thought he'd run to somewhere near his chase mark, and he'd only had two runs over hurling, so he's entitled to, you know, improve on the two races he'd run so far over hurling, particularly one at Christmas, and it worked out perfectly. Really, I, I thought actually. He won a bit more snug than the the next chest. Like once, once Cobden knew he had Dashel Drasher, he wasn't too hard on him. And uh, oh, I'd say plenty more to come. I'd be, I'd be pretty hopeful now. Um, Are you on each way? You win only at 33s. I actually, I would normally never have each way, but I just did because I'd just be afraid of Irish Point. Okay. I think he's really classy, but I think nobody needs to be back there now. Watching yeah. the way. He, that went. They didn't go like they didn't go overly hard either. And he still won. Like if he gets a true examination of stamina, he'd only be better again. Um, so I'd be fairly hopeful for him now. Yeah, thirty-three to one advised. Now eight to one as we record on Tuesday afternoon. That was Noble Yates winning the cleave, and now hopefully goes on to win the Paddy Power Stairs. Um, watch the race again. I watched the race a couple of times afterwards. If you actually watch after the line, Ruby's a great man for the after the line. Mm. Paisley Park never goes by him. Yeah, yeah. So, although went, it looked like they he couldn't went to. around again. Yeah, he never. As I said to you, he yeah. was there was more. Watch Cobden. He's near. Once he stopped writing, but he's not overly aggressive. From about seventy five yards out, he goes race one here. No point in giving him too hard a time. Um, there's more to come. Like that's why his third hurdle start ever. 
I know he's had experience over fences, but um, he's more to come. And then I thought Bright, like I know the race kind of fell apart a little bit at Hunt. You know, I thought Bright Till was very good as well. Um, obviously, we spoke about her last week, and I think she's the main danger, Dina Blue now. Uh, I wouldn't want to see the ground turn up heavy at Cheltenham, but I think if, you know, if it's kind of good to soft, she'll just travel out the back, and if there's any um, chink in Dina Blue's stamina, I think she'd be the one to take advantage. I think he'd done it as well. Uh, I think he's turning into a brilliant rider. Very good. Um, maybe small but underrated still. But I think, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty hopeful for that as well. That's the Miss Paddy Paris Mares Chase. Bright Hill, she was advised at 25 to 1 yeah. and now 8. 8 as well. 8 so. would also think that we are a bit under, but I think... Is that you're the, doing? Yeah, well, I just, I don't like Ali Degore. Me and myself and Ryan McHugh had a discussion about it and neither of us liked Allegory de Vassi, so we ended up pushing her best. Uh, I think Thursday was it. Um, after Brides Hill won, we pushed Limerick Lace as well. We just felt she's more of a three minor, maybe. Um, Allegory de Vassi is probably the opposite. She probably doesn't quite get the two Not really, five. no, but she's yeah. just been she's like, she's such an inconsistent profile now. Mm. You couldn't like her. Mm. Look, Dina Blue's definitely the one to beat. I think we cut her from six to four to five to four. Uh, just because of the way the race was shaping up, but we just kind of feel Brides Hill is the danger. Um, I'd be pretty hopeful Brides Hill hit the three at least in that. Um, did Paddy you go Paris. each way on her as well? I did, because oh, I, just thought, but I just thought the makeup of the okay. race again, like you're very likely to have eight or nine max, yeah. and I just couldn't see how she wouldn't be in the three unless she had an accident. All right, so 33 is no wouldn't be win, Now, we wouldn't be my normal way. I'd yeah, normally win Because only. it's two anti-post bets rather, exactly. Than, exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah, rather than the one. Yeah, you know. Remember you mentioned that to me before, and I think Rory's on the same. Rory also with you with Brides Hill as well. He mentioned that. So that's 25 to 1 Brides Hill, 33 is no be eights. I hope you are sitting on those anti-post wagers like Frank Hickey. Fingers crossed. No stones. Will be seen at there. those two particular yards and just, just walk around the stones. Don't tr tread on anything. You can comment on uh, the YouTube if you're watching this on the Paddy Power Racing YouTube channel. And we're delighted to see some people are commenting. Uh, it's, and it's all positive ish, kind of, <laughs> sort of. Uh, most of it is positive. Uh, Anthony asked if Mahler Mission was out for the season. Um, obviously, John McConnell started the season hopeful for the, I'm not going to do a Ruby on this, the, the Coral Gold Cup. Um, ran okay. Oh, you're in a cracker. Yeah, yeah well, we, well, I guess cracker, okay. I don't Two know. Two seconds? Yeah. Off a big enough weight? I don't know. I, I, I would have liked to have seen him win it, to be honest, because I'm. Just, it's winner enough, and I'm like Ruby. But anyway. Yeah, I thought it was a massive run. He's uh, not going to run a channel, though, is he? Uh, I wouldn't think so, for, no. For I, think, I think the national is the aim. So, like, mm. like, for him, if he was going for the Gold Cup, you'd want him to win yeah. the Carl Gold Cup. But going for a national, I thought it was a mighty run. Yeah, um, I think that's the best way to go. On him. He doesn't need to run again to get into the Nash or to, like new new qualifying rules. He should be fine. I think he's running all he the relevant races. Fine, yeah, like, he should be yeah. fine. Uh, Davy Mack asks, "Why aren't you on the Monday show as well, Frank Hickey?" It's a great question, Davy. Because I'm B level. Mark's not happy enough for me to be in the A team, <laughs> so he's just Mark. putting the B team. Well, actually, producer Mark did answer the question, and he didn't say that on YouTube. <laughs> he actually said he gave the political answer is like Frank's very busy and he can't do the Monday show, but he gave the real reason. Yeah. Like, this way we get two shows out and producer Mark gets more hits on YouTube <laughs> and he gets to say to his boss, like, uh, look at all these hits on YouTube. That's, maybe that's, that's, it, yeah. that's the real answer. Uh, back to the show, uh, which was live on Monday evening as per usual. Uh, there was, I, I like the comment sent in to Ruby and Rory, I can't remember the name, sorry, of who, who commented, give us a winner at 10 to 1 or bigger for the DRF. <laughs> <laughs> Easy yeah. peasy, a 10 to 1 or bigger. anti post like, is yeah, anti -post a as week well. out. Yeah. Uh, that was um, nice. They actually, to, to be fair, about Rory and Ruby gave gave him one. Yeah. I, was, I was thinking I was going to get nothing, I don't know, from Ruby. The only thing I'd be worried about Lecky Watson wasn't declared this morning. Oh, okay, right. In the okay, Italian so I don't think. Okay, yeah. High Wind is in the Spring Juvenile. She is in, or he, 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 he is in. He is, he is in, in. Yeah, and so High Wind, Ruby gave High Wind a 10 to 1. He's probably shorter now, is he? 7, I think. But at the time, he was 10, 10 to 1. 10 to 1, yeah. Okay, so uh, technically and if you, yeah, if you wanted me to throw in one. Go ten. on, give me one at 10 it's to 1. It's not priced yet. It will be priced by, by the time this comes out. Uh, not by me, actually, one oh, of okay. the lads doing this race, but um, Baron Hash Primrose in the Mayor's bumper on Sunday. Uh, she was very well backed at Limerick on St. Stephen's Day. I think she opened 20 to 1. Um, was nineteen to or was uh, nine to one in the morning of the race. Uh, obviously, she was twenty to one in the twenty third when we priced it up, and she got smashed up into three to one, and she won very easily. She won by seven and a half lengths. Now the interesting thing is the horse was second. Harry's Annie was second was second on her next start as well, beating eleven lengths by Maureen, mm -hmm. who's all the high parts. Um, so you know it kind it's of ties in there, yeah. yeah. Um, so Say the name of the horse again. Baron Hash Primrose trained with John Sweeney, very shrewd trainer. Very good. Um, yeah, I would be very interested in seeing her lie up now on Sunday. Obviously, William Garden will have a few, and she might just be a little bit underestimated, mm. and I wouldn't 
Make sure she's bigger than ten to one now. Whoever is pricing it up, give him another. I, I, yeah, she should be ten to one. She should. She should be a fair yeah. price anyway. Yeah. Like it's in. There's a few more sexier types in there, and obviously you know sexy we've got bets. Willie Gard and all the rest of them. Do like our sexy bets. Yeah. Um. So watch out for that mare in the. That's the last race at DRF, isn't it? The mare's bumper on the yes. Sunday. Yeah. So watch out for her. Um. Fair play to the commenter who asked Ruby. Uh, about the bumper horse on Cloud Wine, who's in the Rich Richie silks but hasn't been seen. I think it's the son of See the Stars, rare enough. Um, got the Ruby answer. Don't know. <laughs> Don't know. Uh, one of many, but I think was asking with a view to the Chetland bumper, but is running out of time. And uh, you get the feeling that maybe. Yeah, I think, maybe I think people have to remember too, like, and I'm not giving a dig out to Ruby, you know, because he works with us. It's like, they do have a lot of horses down there and to know them all. <laughs> and <laughs> like he's not there every day. We'll put it this way, I'd say there's probably 200 people on the training floor. I'd say I'd be lucky if I know 30 of them. No, yeah, fair play. And they do wear different clothes. These horses do all look the same. To a they lot of people. Exactly. To a lot of people. <laughs> Except you got that one in the uh, in the El Fabiolo video. Um, one more comment. It was actually on the episode already. The comments were flying in from yesterday's episode, or Monday's episode, I should say. And it was a good one. It relates to Tom Nugent. So this isn't coming from us, Frank. No. This is coming from the commenters. Uh, John. Good one, John. My, uh, my uh, pseudonym. Frost covers were discussed last week, lads. Uh, is that why Tom is wearing them as a jumper? Have a look and see his jumper. It's, <laughs> it's it top class. Fairly. Fashion tips from Tom. He's unreal. Fairly woolly looking now. Yeah. He's a woolly man. We did shave. All right, let's talk about what they actually talked about ahead of the Chatham Festival. And the first race we're going to look at is the Arkle Chase. This weekend, we're going to see Marine National, the DRF, which is potentially going to change the market significantly if he doesn't win. And the first question to Ruby was whether jumping experience was crucial when it comes to the Arkle. A couple of horses have won it without a huge amount of experience. And Ruby is quick to say, because he fancies Marine National, no. Agree? We like well chief women, as, as they touched mm. on, West of Warhorse, probably a bit more of a, uh, just a freak result, really, in hindsight. They look well chief, turned out to be top class. Um, yeah, look, you obviously can win it with not that much experience, but, um, you know, as good as Marine National was on Chase debut, he jumped well and he showed he could lead as well as, you know, in her, over hurdles, he, he was basically held up all, all the time. Um, there would seem to be very little flaws in them. We certainly had one run over fences. So I could be interested to see if something puts him under pressure um, on Saturday. Is it Saturday or something he runs? This weekend. This we'll weekend. Go this, weekend. We'll go this weekend, yeah. I can't be sure. Um, you know, will his jumping hold up? Probably will. But, like, I mean, you know, um, you couldn't say he's absolutely bomb proof either at this stage. Well, that's exactly nearly what Rory and oh, Ruby was, were saying. Like, yeah, yeah, they're, they're basically, so like, the, to quote Rory DeLarge, Nearly flawless. Cannot see anything that touches him. We, we put not even way. not even putting anything up yeah. each way against him. Like if Gaelic Warrior runs against him at the weekend, he'll make him go anyway. And like if there is any chink in his armor, you imagine he'd be the one to maybe, you know, maybe force a mistake from him or something. Now you're worried with Gaelic Warrior, obviously, as he he shifts a bit right over fences. I don't think Leopardstown will be as much of an issue as Cheltenham would be. Um but yeah, it'd be intriguing to see how it goes. But like, look, he's obviously a very good horse. Even the confidence he, that Mikey Sullivan rode him with in the Supreme, you knew he was a very good horse because like, you know, turning in, you're like, oh, geez, Faso Vega's gone here and he was still sitting quiet. Mm. Going, nah, I have him, not a potter, you know? For such a young, and not, uh, well, inexperienced at that level. Yeah, but he's, but, yeah. like, I, there was an interview with him. I don't know, was, I can't remember if it was the Irish feed or something like that did an interview with him that came across on Twitter or YouTube and he comes across as an extremely impressive young man. Yeah. He's... Years beyond his age. I think he I think he learned a lot so much about that horse in the Royal Bond when he not got him out of trouble. Remember he he knocked yeah. the last hurdle over? Yeah. And he still managed to get up yeah. and win it. And I'd say he was just like, I can do anything on this. And that balance. was the day as well when we thought he needed good ground. Yeah. And that was really soft. Yeah. He's a he's a cracking horse. It's so rare to hear Rory Delarge talk about like I thought this is the perfect race. Royal finds something at each way odds to beat Marine National. And even he's like, not white flag, this thing wins. Um, Ruby, did, we, we talked, obviously, the lads talked about Gaelic Warrior. He could run in this. He's the 5-2 to two second favourite. Um, but Ruby does later talk about him more in the turners. But he made the point, about same as yourself, that Leopardstown this weekend should suit Gaelic Warrior versus the Cheltenham, where t jumping right is much more severe of an issue. Well, like, the, like even, even if he did win at the weekend, right? Like, it's 2-1. He's just shy of two miles of yeah, channel. Yeah, one mile seven and something. And it's far more of a turning track on the old track. So you'd be talking about dropping a furlong, far more turning, which would expose his jumping right even further, rather than 
in the turners, he'd be obviously on the on the newer track, which isn't quite as severe. So he mightn't be as impacted as much. So even if he wins, I would struggle to see him running in the article. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and, you know, hypothetically speaking, if he did beat Marine National and he did turn up in the article, I'd be very much against him. You'd be hoping to get a nice prize on Marine National. Yeah, unless he yeah. jumped like gun barrel straight yeah. at Leperson. Yeah, that would be that would really shake up the market were that to happen, Kelly Quarry. And also oh, put a bit of a right. poser in the old Cla Sutton camp yeah, which where race we run him. Yeah. That would be interesting. Eight to fifteen Marine National, five to two as we record. Um Rory suggested that the eight to fifteen about Marine National, let's assume the weekend goes as planned, you're gonna get bigger than that the morning of. You're the trader. Well, me, well, well if he think? goes and dots up again. I think he's going to be three on, isn't he? Yeah, potentially. Like, what, what's but going the, to... So Rory's angle is, it's day one of the festival. The bookies are going to be out to get the accounts in, all that sort of stuff. You see, but the issue is, yeah, there's an element of being, you know, aggressive with attracting custom and trying to get custom in on day one to play dr through the week. But I think what one issue that maybe people haven't realised is if Ballyburn goes and holds us up this weekend and ends up a short price for the Supreme, you're going to have the multi of Ballyburn Marine National, Constitution Hill, and Lossy Mouth, and potentially one short, um, maybe Embassy Garden and the National Hunt Chase even too, and that multi would be... Hang on, are you telling me there could be crazy. a rich, richy favourite trained by Willie Mullins in the Mayor's Hurdle that could be the fourth leg of an amazing act? <laughs> yeah. Has this happened before? Uh, I don't think it ever has, no, but if it did happen... Oh, I'm not sure. But like that. I said, it would just be something that would make you less aggressive on those short price ones okay. then, because you'd have to try and manage the liability that that multi would pose and it would be far greater than any liability you'd have in any of the singles. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Of course, yeah. Okay, it was an interesting angle from Rory, but potentially debunked here by Frank. Um, Ruby gave us an update in Fasal Vega and it was very interesting, I will say. He talked about Fasal Vega. He said he's he's proving to be a, a real talking point in Clusutton and there's a lot of opinions floating about, but then Ruby said there's only one opinion that matters. Now, Tom later got it out of him. It looks like Ruby wants him to step up and trip to the Turners. And it seems like, I'm reading between the lines here, it seems like Willie Mullins of the opinion we're sticking at two miles. Um, where would you run? I think you have to step him up. He's been beaten. Like he's been beaten in uh, a Supreme. He's been beaten at Christmas. You know, he's a good horse, but is he a great horse? I don't think so. So I would definitely step him up. I okay. think you have to try something different. Um, and yeah, I think it's a no-brainer to step him up. I don't think you could, like unless you ran the two-mile race at the weekend and won. You can't run him in the arc against Marine National, really. It's it's unlike Willie to run. Well, if if Gaelic Warrior goes in the Turners, you know it's really unlikely he's going to put Fasal Vega in there as well. I, I, that's probably Willie Mullins thinking. Right, he, I'm sure he probably thinks the race suits him as much as the two miler, but he's just like, I'm not going to run both of them in the same race. But the only thing about it is, is Gaelic Warrior an absolute certain? You know, they they be looking. Oh, this won't be beaten. Mm. Like you have to look at it too. Like Gaelic Warrior has lost two races since joining Willie Mullins. Both to check them. That would just be. Yeah, they're still, I know you say like he's won the Liffey Herd, Le Leperstown, or whatever, but like it'd be in the back of your head. Like, rather than if Marine National is really impressive this week, you go, look, let's just concede the arc, but we're not going to win that, and let's make sure we win the Turners. Mm -hmm. Yes, not a bad shout. Right, yeah. selections, uh, no surprise, Marine National. Um, <laughs> when asked about, the Tom asked, to be fair, what are the dangers to Marine National? Um, I think it was Rory who said the fences, and then Ruby said the weather. <laughs> so, and even then, yeah. I think he was still probably just trying to think of something to say. But Oh, look, at the same time, he's, a one, he's had one start over fences. Uh, obviously, he's the most likely winner, and his price reflects that. But, you know, again... There's four to seven shots that will give you a lot less of a sweat. Okay, than, go on then. Him. What are you taking them um, on? I would be taking them on. I'd just be waiting and seeing. Like, in, as I said before, you don't need to play every market anti-post. And this one is one where, unless you think he's going to get beaten at the weekend, and then other things are going to shorten around him, then you just sit and wait. If you want to have an each-way play uh, close to the time, um, or betting it without market. If you push me, I'd probably have a few Bob and JPR1. I don't think he's doing it now because I don't think he's starting any degree. Um, he obviously was going to bolt up in the grade two here in November when he fell at the last. He was going to win very easily. Um, again, was travelling, jumping all right at Sandown in the King Henry the eight when he made a bad mistake, two out, and that kind of he fell in the hole very quickly then. But uh, he was much better at Linkfield um, just over a week ago. I think he jumped really well, travelled well, so he didn't need to make it either that day. He, he just. Uh, let him sit in behind, and um, I thought he was valued for far more than the winning distance there. 
Um, you know, he's almost certainly going to run the Arkel. I doubt he'll run the Grand Annual. So, yeah, he'd be one that maybe you'd have a few bob in each way. I can't admit to having a few bob in Blood Destiny. Basically, as soon as Mr. Policeman was beaten in ace, I was like, right, Blood Destiny's the obvious Willie one. Backed him each way, going horribly each way, and obviously he let himself down then uh, two days later, so I'm not overly hopeful for that bet. But, um, yeah, I think it's not a race you need to be getting involved in now. Yeah, we do have the non-runner. You have set up the non-runner money back without Marine National. Yeah. So you could if you want to go. That's 8-1 to one 8 for JPR1. JPR1. I think it's very Marine solid. National. I think, like... I'd be surprised if four finished ahead of him. We put it that way. Um, his jumping's good in the main. The track suits. Um, he travels fairly powerfully. He's definitely a much better chaser than he is hurdler. Um, yeah, I could see him hitting the frame. Fair enough. Um, but yeah, it's not one I'd be rushing to have a betting at this stage. Okay, fair enough. That's the Arkle covered. We're going to take a quick break and we'll return for the Gold Cup. Introducing Paddy Power's new money back tokens for racing. The flexibility to choose the race in which you get your money back offers. Claim your token via the homepage banners or through the promotions page. Add your selection to your bet slip from any eligible money back race. Apply the money back token to the selection. Choose your stake and place your bet. Easily track the horses on which you've used a money back token in my bets. Get your money back as a free bet if the horse finishes second, third, or fourth. Get brand new money back tokens with Paddy Power. Thanks for rejoining us. A reminder, do check out Paddy Power Racing YouTube if you're not watching this on Paddy Power Racing YouTube channel already. Loads of good stuff. And as we said already, non-runner money back on those Cheltenham. I was going to say anti-post prices, but just non-runner money back prices because they're not anti-post prices anymore. Okay, let's look back to the Gold Cup. Rory makes the point. Uh, it was a good one as well. Willie Mullins um, used to be derided as a man who couldn't condition his horses past novice company. He remedied that. Then he couldn't train chasers. He's remedied that. What's he going to remedy now? Like, William Mullins just can't seem to do it, and he just seems to get better and better. So what's next for William Mullins? Probably win the Derby in the Guineas, is it? It's a good chance. If he was given the right horse, I'm sure he would, given how well he's doing on the flat. I uh, wouldn't mind sending him a good one if I had one. Um, yeah, he's just incredible, isn't he? I thought if there's the thing that he might want to improve on at the Chatham Festival or in terms of in the jumping game, maybe handicap chases in the UK? I'd say handicap chases. He hasn't yeah. had one. With the festival in a long time, hasn't mm. he? But hasn't had a yeah. huge amount of runners, I would say. Not a massive amount, yeah. but obviously, like Dino Blue was unlucky in the Grand Annual last year, and it's had plenty of run well. Like it's in even last year, Hot and Clore was fifth in the in the plate off top weight or near top weight. Um, yeah, but the other thing as well is most of his horses are, you know, campaigns, not really protecting handicap marks. Like you know, so then they're becomes, running in small graded races. They're exactly. getting a pretty high rate. Yeah, pretty exactly. High so like yeah. you know, I still I assume if you went Willie. Try and get one handicap for the festival for me. It, well, what he does is he just gets horses from other yards and then improves them by forty pounds. That's how he gets the handicap. So, yeah. so yeah, that's kind of now the Emmett Mullins tactic. Um, the Gold Cup itself, uh, the lads had a quick chat about kind of likely results or, or past recent past results, and um, Tom posed it to to Rory. The, the kind of the days of the the hundred to one cool ground, cool cool dawn, cool ground, cool ground. They're they're kind of gone now. It seems to be the the shocks that sort of. The types of progressive handicapper or even a hunter chaser the running fields in. probably aren't as big as they used to be either. Yeah. Like are they? Like you're probably looking at, you know, if you go back to the nineties and early nineties, you're looking at twenty running in the Gold Cup. It's amazing when you watch it on YouTube and you see Cotto stars first or second. Oh, one. It's about 20, the one with Tarpon 20, Green playing. This is like twenty odd runners. Twenty those, yeah. odd. Like isn't what are you looking at now? You're probably looking at twelve to fourteen sort of. If that. If that, depending. Mm. So, um, yeah, just it's a bit like you know people go, oh, the triumph has become fairly, you know. Punter friendly recently, and that's because it's not 30 runner cavalry charge anymore since they brought in the boodles. Do you know? Yeah. It just weeds out all the uh, chaff. Which is fine. I, yeah. don't, I, I don't mind. I do like seeing those. You know, what was that horse who kept on the, the, the giant bolster? You know, just getting up the hill for 30. He never win one, but they keep running him in it. And, oh, yeah. And but those he, sort was, of he was a fight. Like, no, he, like, he won a Cotswold chase as well, didn't he? Ah, yeah. He was good. Like, I'm probably, he was a good horse, yeah. Um, just just Sir Rembrandt then, right? That one for, for Robert Olner. Like, he I paced mean, him too, though, didn't he? Exactly. But these, you just never thought they'd win one, but they, you know, they, they're running it. Now, maybe they might go Ryanair, they might go, you know, stay for something at Aintree or maybe just go into a handicap. But yeah. Um, Ruby was asked, if Gallagher Pan Champ can become the how many how many times how many horses have retained their Gold Cup crown? Is this is this six seven, of seven. seven? Oh yeah, he will become the seventh. Yes, correct. Become the seventh, yeah. He will become the seventh. And I really liked Ruby's answer because a lot of people are looking at the market here and thinking, why is Gallagher Champ so much shorter than Fast or Slow? Who's beaten him? And here's Ruby who wraps it up. Gallagher Champ, Cheltenham three times, essentially should be a three-time winner. Cheltenham included graded races, Fast or Slow, two handicaps, beaten twice. Yeah, but he was beaten. A short head in the Carl Cup, 
and be the neck by the subsequent Grand National winner in Ultima. It's not like you can say, oh, he doesn't handle the track. Don't think that's the point. I don't think he's saying he didn't handle the track, but I think he's... But he, you know, like I said, he's been beaten, but he's definitely improved for chasing. And, uh, you know, like, I wouldn't... You have to remember too, Galpin de Champ came from handicaps over hurdles, you know? Like, he wasn't an out-and-out out grade one horse initially. Faster slow, he was a bit of a slow burner. Like, again, he's only eight now, isn't he? He's not you know, that old. Um, he's just improved at the right time, completely unexposed over uh, staying trips as well. Uh, I don't think it's that simple, okay. to be honest. Um, I like the simplicity of it, I'll be honest. Yeah, no, like it's in Galbertram should be three from three, but he's not. He's two from three. Mm -hmm. Doesn't I mean you could argue faster slow cut should be two from two. You know, he was nailed, like he's in. He was very, I thought he was unlucky in the Carl Cup and Carl Gramner got him late. And, you, know, mm. you know, you could easily say he could, he could very easily be two from two at Chatham. Doesn't okay. I mean considering the distance he was beaten. So I don't really. Okay. I don't buy that. Don't buy it? Fair enough. Um, do you buy the maths lesson that Tom was given by uh, by Rory when Tom well, said it is about you're getting four, like four, four, times the, four times the price, four to one for faster slow than Gallop and Shama 10 to 11? Well, you'd be saying, what you should have said is if you didn't want me to pull up four times the return rather than then Rory pulled him up on like the percentage chance or probability. Yes. It's not four times the probability of him winning. So that's where it's very niche picking. That's like. pretty niche, wasn't it? Yeah. That's pretty niche. Yeah. But no, no better man than Rory and Ruby. It's, to be fair, it's Tom. It's a hard one. It's a hard one. Uh, Rory did confirm he's back to Cork Rambler each way. You mentioned him there. Um, 20 to 1, as we record. I should have said Galvin Shaw, 10 to 11. Um, fast slow, 4 to 1. Cork Rambler, 20 to 1 each way. Do you see the angle? I do, yeah. Uh, do you need to jump in and back him now? I don't think so. Like, is he going to shorten? I don't think so. Is he going to run between now and the festival? No, no. Okay. straight there. So, like, again, a lot of the time it's like, you know, I don't even be having a bet if I think, right, he's going to dr shorten dramatically in the interim, or if he's going to run, you know what I mean? If he's going to run, or if he thinks something's going to happen where somebody at the front of the market you think might get beaten and, and the price will go, then I'd step in and have a bet. But, like, in that situation, I can see the rationale, definitely. I just don't really see the need to step in and back him now because unless something happens, Gallop and Deschamp or... Um, if faster or slow, say, I think you get that price or bigger. Fair Do you enough. Know, a couple of days out. Fair enough. Let's talk about the price of Gallop and Deschamps then. 10 to 11. Can you see that being 4 to 7 on the day? I mean... Well, if he beats if he beats faster or slow at the weekend, uh, he probably will go mm. 4 to 6, 8 to 13, won't he? Okay. Because you've knocked out the 4 to 1 second favourite. Um, yeah, so he could shorten up even further. Like, he was mightily impressive for Christmas. Like, there's no doubt about it. He was amazing. But it was a massive performance. And we've seen horses run to an extremely high level and not quite get there again on the next start. And it's just, it's just a small, it's just a tiny thing. Like, you know, it might not be an issue at all, but it would really blow the race wide open now if Fast or Slow beat him at the weekend. Yeah, that would be definitely... It would blow three, wide open. Like, how three would you times he's beaten But like, how would you yeah. price it then? Like, as in... You'd have to make faster, slow favourites, but at the same time, you'd probably be a little bit uncomfortable not having galloping favourites, you know? I, I, I hope you're posed with that question as traders on, on Saturday, um, after the race on Saturday. The galloping Sham angle, Ruby made the point versus album photo. Tom asked him about the differences between the two. It was really interesting because Ruby was saying it's not a case of album photo was fragile or anything like that. He just really was hardening himself in those races. And it actually looks like galloping Sham is hardening himself, but Ruby says two days later, He's fine. Yeah, he's absolutely fine. Which Yeah. Oh, look, I suppose every horse is different, like. Um, and he can stand his racing, so why not race him, you know? Which is great. Um, which is great. We get to see him more, which is brilliant. Um, but yeah, look, I suppose the only thing he would say is, you know, getting beaten at Punchstown and getting beaten the John, John Durkin just gave you some hope that he's not absolutely 100% bomb-proof, you know? I think had he not been beaten, say if he not run those two races you'd be looking at a very, very short price for the Gold Cup. But it just gives you that small hope to everyone else against him that maybe, you know, maybe he might be a small bit below his best at Cheltenham and it'll give the rest a squeak. OK. Uh, Ruby, when pressed, said, look, Gallop and Deschamps likely to win. He added that Cork Rambler is definitely worth a look in the each-way market. He was joining him Rory on that, or sorry, each-way against him if he wanted to go against him. What are Frank Hickey's thoughts? Uh, very hard to have a bet. Um, obviously, you know I'm a massive fan of Jerry Kalam. You could back him now. He's mm -hmm. too short. Uh, he'll definitely drift. He's not going to run again before Cheltenham. Uh, connections seem to be adamant that he didn't run up to his best. I don't think he did either. Like, being, like I think had he been 
20 odd lengths behind Gallop and Champ and then seven lengths back to Capitano. I think you'd be pretty sure then, yeah, he's run, you know, banged his form. Um, but you could also say that the Brown Advisory form hasn't worked out. You know, Brown didn't do a huge pile for it yet. The real whacker ran better at the weekend than the Cotswolds Chase. Um, but you know, again, if he was 12, 14, 16 to 1 on the day, maybe he'd have a, throw a few bob at him each way. I, I'll tell you, if you press me for a bet now, I'd have a small bet in the high senior at 66. You might think I'm nuts. Uh, well, but, but, for multiple reasons. But if, Frank, if but. you watch, he, he was travelling. I actually jumped really well at the weekend for a change for him. He really did. And he was travelling until... The stir, the was stir, it the stir broke, wasn't it? Yeah. Stir broke, like, because yeah. I was looking, what is wrong? Yeah, so, uh, yeah. I, I didn't I, see it go first. Like, what's Jockey doing? It's like, it was all over him. And next, you saw the replay. It's like, he had no chance. He actually, he did great to get around with him. Did very well. But, the like, right he, leg dying. He'd like, gone, yeah. like, he'd gone 11 to 8 in the run or 6 to 4 in the run. He was travelling and jumping that well. And he still wasn't beaten very far. And, um, you know, he's 66 to 1. He's 33 to 1 in the without Gallop and the Champ, non run no bet. Again, like, you know, if you're backing him each way, Assuming Gallop and Champ would be in the three, you're basically getting four places, you know? Um, I'd take a flyer on him. Yeah. I, I, thought it was, I thought it was much better for him. And you look at his Cheltenham record, obviously he's had that mishap at the weekend, but I, look, I might be the minority. I, I think he would have won at the weekend without that happening, the way he was going and jumping. Um, even, even after the steer broke, he jumped three out, and I was still like, geez, he's still travelling. Do you know, it's only turn in, Mulqueen couldn't do anything on him. Like, he was just trying to hang on. So he could give the horse no help. Um, and yeah, 66 to 1 about a horse who, he's won the Cotswolds Chase previously. He was running a huge race in the Gold Cup when he fell last year. Yeah, I, okay. I think, I think like, you know, you take maybe fast or slow and gallop in the shamb out of it and, you know, he's in there with the rest of them. Um, the, did I hear murmurings they might be thinking the Ryanair? They might? Maybe, they might, maybe, they yeah. Might, they but might I think if you're doing split them up, Kirk but if, Rambler and. But if you're doing and, and non, I think non run no bet. Is he? Um, I think he's sixty six to one okay. and thirty three to one with, without Gallop and Champ. Non run no bet. I think that's very fair. Yeah. Like for a horse with his ability, and I really thought there was a lot. Like I didn't think his jumping was an issue at all. The weekend it was actually good. I was surprised because uh, I'd had a few bob with him, and I was like, holy shit, he's actually. Traveling and jumping here, we might be in business, and then obviously that happened. But um, yeah, I'd definitely be having a few bob with him if I thought he was going to run. What time did you back him for the Paddy Power Cotswold Chase? I'm intrigued to know because I was working, you weren't, and I was looking at the show, and we were talking about the race and Capitano seven ten to one or there thereabouts in the anti post market for last week. A hoist senior went off, I think eight to one, or you touched oh, eight or nine. Yeah, to no, one it was out. Saturday. It was that sort of huge out drifter, massive drifter. Yeah. Like like it was the most insane market. Uh, I know money oh, yeah, came Capitano for Capitano, was, yeah, but. Hoisinger and Royal Pagai, they were disputing favouritism nearly on the Tuesday for the race. They both yeah. went off seven and nine to one or something. Yeah, like. I think it probably wasn't the best price race. Maybe, maybe, maybe. maybe. Um, but yeah, I did think, I had a few problems. I just did think, do you know, I think it was 15 to two maybe of Actimat. I just thought, yeah. it was, like, look, it wasn't a massive bettering, but it was more like, he's not really 15 to two shot in this field, I didn't think. And he probably wasn't. To be fair, I don't, yeah. I think, look, I was just saying, if you're looking at a race and you're going, what could hit the frame? Like, faster slow is relatively short. The dry clown's a bit to prove. Lampresse has to back up Lingfield. It was a good return. Plenty more in his plate. You know, what else is there? Like mm. Roy yeah. did say, keep your powder dry in Lampresse until he runs at Ascot, because they, they are going to run him in the Ascot chase. Yeah. At least they, uh, that's the plan. So you've got another chance of seeing him. Yeah, He's yeah. I, I, Ascot, yeah, I just, I just pref like, you know, you're looking at Heisen, you're on car ground. I prefer Heisen. Okay. At, right. the price, like at, at the price. As I said, yeah. there was a lot more in that run. And like, you know, he's obviously been pushed out because he's finished he finished fourth, is it? That's irrelevant. You may as well but say it, P. But like, I mean, like, you may as well say P. It, up, like, like, yeah. There's every chance that Steer has broke, he wins. Mm. And he's 16 to one shot. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Overreaction from you, or your department. Uh, uh, right, so, Ahoy Senor, maybe you have a little tipple on him in the non-runner money back market. Uh, the lad's going for Gallop and Shop, essentially. Cork Rambler as an each way. Listen to Russell. Could yeah, have I, I definitely afternoon. have it each way at Ahoy yeah. Senor. In both the win mark and, and without. without I think third street one without. Could definitely see him hitting the frame. All right. The Golden Miller, hat tip to Ruby, oh, yeah. uh, or the Turner's Novice Chase, uh, the two and a half miler. Uh, Thomas, uh, basically, have the British trained novices figured it, this race out? They've won three of the last five. Is there a trend developing? And the lads are like, no. But just like they won the last two brown advisories, isn't it? Yeah. Well, 
It was, a, it was a question, but it was very quickly said. Now, the programme, Rory re referenced that the programme in the UK, there seems to be a lot of t intermediate novice trips. I don't know if that's, that's anything to do. But anyway, I thought it was, a, it was a relatively interesting conversation. But then we went straight into Gaelic Wire, even money favourite for the race. And Ruby kind of already hinted at it, but he thinks that this is the race room versus the Arkle, and that seems to be the way they're going. From what you were saying earlier, you don't think he's bomb-proof when he stretched imagination? No, I see here in the notes, Ruby said that his only problem is the price. Yeah. I would say the only problem is going left-handed. Well, yeah, <laughs> bigger yeah. problem with the price, to be <laughs> honest. Um, as I said, it's not that he's, you know, he can't go left-handed, but he definitely was better going right-handed, you know? He does adjust a little bit to his right, and like, just when you're on the turn and off the time at Chelham, it definitely caught about the boodles. He was just betting, I think he was just beaten by a better horse than the Ballymore last year, but it definitely caught him in the boodles. And, you know, even particularly the first day, he definitely jumped right. You know, he'd have to be far superior to be get away with that at Chelham. I wonder how many favourites that are even money, that, well, let's say he goes off at even money, how many horses that go off even money for a novice chase were beaten in their previous two Chelham Festival, uh, you know, appearances? Small list, I would have thought. Very, very Probably, small list. Yeah. Yeah, I very, look, there pretty have niche, been, though. There have it? been horses who adjusted right, who won. I remember Captain Chris, he was definitely favoured going right-handed and, and, and did adjust right, but he won an article still. He beat Freelance Rabo, who went on to win a champion chase. So it can be done, but it just... Is that the one where they had to run around the fence? No, you're thinking of oh, uh, Finian's Rainbow and Sides so of Europe had to go around the champion chase yeah, yeah. of Finian's Rainbow. That would have helped Kip Capricus get to run around the fence as a right handed yeah. jumper, but anyway, yeah. Um, Ile Francais, let's cover him uh, briefly because they mentioned he's 5 to 2 second favourite. Well, like he doesn't run. If you're looking at non runner no pet, that 5 to 2 is humongous, really, isn't it? Well, he goes off. He goes on. He goes off. Fav? Even oh. Gaelic Warriors in there? Oh, yeah. Really? Oh, 100%. Okay. 100%. Like. Is non-runner yeah. money back not priced as if it as if it they should, are all yeah, running? Yeah, it is. But there's still an element not, of anti-post There's probably there? an element of, oh, he's probably not going to run, so yeah. there's no point. You know, when you have a sharp price favourite, you don't want to be like, what are we Gaelic Warrior? 11 to 8 or something, is it? Even money I've got Even here. money, yeah. yeah, maybe. Even money. And then be like, 5 to 4, in Le Francais, for the optics of it. Hmm. But like, if you really want, you know, if you had plenty of money to spare and want to throw it in Le Francais, knowing you're going to get it back, you know, two days beforehand, if he doesn't run, but if he does, you're sitting on Lovey Dogger. Famously. I would say he'd be, I think he'd be very short, even against Gaelic Choir. In January, the end of January, famously, we all have lots of money spare. Yeah, it's a great time of yeah. year to have loads, loads of money spare uh, in January. Yeah, no, Ilya France, he's 5-2, to two, uh, apparently a weather hold-up, but also he's only in the race as a backup. Yeah, but don't think it's like, you know, if anything happened, Gaelic Warrior, and he didn't end up in the race, the next year it's wide open, would this still maybe? Hmm. Think about it. He was incre he was incredible. His jumping was just to confirm. He's going for the Grand Steep at Autoy, Yeah, that's the plan. Mm. Now, I don't know how good your French uh, pattern racing level is. Is that okay? Not great. No, no. Uh, is that not an open chase, the Grand Steep, rather than a novice? It is. Yeah. It's okay. So, and he's going to run in it as a novice. So they don't seem to have any concerns there. Yeah. Okay. And is that not like three miles six as well? I, uh, I couldn't tell you. Okay. Right. Okay. I'm asking questions. I'm, I, not... I, I, I'm, I'm going off script, Frank. I, I well, could've... it's just more. I'm not. Yeah, I wouldn't watch a lot of French racing, and okay. what French racing I do watch is more flash than jumps, to be honest. Fair enough, the old Grand Prix to Paris. Grand Prix to Paris. A little bit of Grand Prix to Paris. <laughs> um, okay, let's talk about Grey Dawning, 7-1 um, to one, uh, at the time of recording. Rory not keen, concerned about his jumping. Doesn't bend his back, Frank Hickey. Would that be a, Would that be something that you guys talk about in the trading room? No. Doesn't bend his back, put that out a few points. Uh, wouldn't say I noticed. <laughs> Did you not? We had Frankel going over the puissance a couple of weeks ago. We got doesn't Grey Dawn doesn't, doesn't bend his back. Well, to be fair, he, serious horse. <laughs> if he's not jumping properly, he's winning the way he's winning. Look, he made a mistake at Cheltenham, granted, but um, yeah, he's a good horse. Like uh, they were talking about running the City Isles. He's not. He's not entered in that. Oh, now, he's not so they're obviously going straight to Cheltenham, and I assume it'll be for the the Brown Advisory rather than this okay, race go now. for that. I him. think had he been entered in the City Isles to run there, there might have been a chance to end up here. But I'd say. Very unlikely now. All right, so the second and third, well, the second and fifth favourites aren't running. Let's talk. Uh, Ruby was asked, fair play, Tom, name the three or name who's running in this race from Close Sutton. And Ruby name checked Gaelic Warrior, fact to file, 9 to 2. And then he said, this could be the making of Fasal Vega at 11 to 2. Again, hoping that Willie is watching, or at least he could talk to Willie at Close Sutton. But is there an element of, you know, almost going off a cliff with Fasal Vega? Do you know the way we all have cliff horses and we're all like, Ah, oh, he'll come good at some stage. And look, as I said, he's a very good horse, but I don't think he's a superstar. They think he was. At the start, I think they thought he was 
superstar, and I don't think he is. I just think he's... Could he the envoy Allen's about him? You know, and he, 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 got his, he got his big day? Maybe, maybe. Yeah. Look, maybe, I just don't think he's as good as they thought. Like, you know, like you take, he was impressive in that champion bumper, but like when you actually look at it, what's, what did he beat? Like, as in America, Mike has been okay. Nothing major since. Um, and even the place, horse, like the horse in behind, nothing's really done much. Suppose the Seabank Bistro, uh, St. James' Gate. The farm is very ordinary. Um, and you look at, like, he's come out then, and then obviously won a punch and would, you know, scramble home to beat Redemption Day. It was made to pull out all the stops. So I don't know. I, I just don't think there's anything there to say he's a superstar. There's nothing there for me. Does he need to be a superstar? To win this? Mm. I don't even think he's like proper, proper, like grade one. Put As him in the grand pro- annual. Put him in the grand annual, Willie. Um, right, Rory, selection time. I'm going with Ginny's. Ginny's or Guineas? Ginny's Destiny, the winner of the Novice Chase, Novice Handicap Chase at Cheltenham at the weekend. He's very good. Yeah. Very good. Um, jumped well, travelled. I think people are latching on to. He's just the exact same pro for the stage star. And they're like, you know, two plus two equals. Turner's Jet- winner. Jetland Festival winner, yeah. yeah. For Paul Nichols. I know you can see it, like as in he's improved. Like he was a good horse for it was Tom Lacey trained him, wasn't it? Over hurdles. And he was a good horse, but yeah, Nichols just getting the best out of him. And we know look, Paul Nichols one of the best at training uh chasers. He's absolutely brilliant and he's turned this horse into a really good one. But his price is corrected. I think he was like nine to one with us on Monday. And he's more like eleven to two now. I think nine to two is what I have. Yeah, well, because I to... when when I was watching the show and taking my notes, I heard Rory say uh, each way Ginny's destiny, and I looked the price of nine. That's not an each way price for Rory. So uh, it, was it was probably nine to one at the time when he when yeah. he said it. Yeah, yeah, probably a bit big when you look at the way that mm. the race at the moment. He's a guaranteed runner, um, and just a non runner no bet. Like, do I think he'll be that short? I think he's one will probably drift as you get right close to it. Like, um, but yeah, you can see it. He's just. Like course form, there's a lot to be said for it. You know, he's three for three, three over three. fences this season. Yeah. There, yeah, yeah, he's the really uh, is the stage star approach, and I yeah. like the the handicap approach as well. The handicap, yeah, novice handicaps, obviously, getting plenty of experience, exactly, bigger fields yeah. and everything. Like, yeah, there's an awful lot to like, but you just kind of think, ah, oh, is he classy enough? Yeah, well, like shit. if it's not the classes renewal, he might well be, but I think, I think if there's a proper grey one horse in here, he won't win. Do you know what I mean? That would be the way I'd look at it. Okay, when Ruby was pressed, he said he wouldn't be against Gaelic Warrior, no surprise there, but he did also name check Factor File, who... He'd be the one I'd yeah. be more interested in now if he was going this way rather than the Brown Advisory. Um, Ruby just, did name check this race he, rather I think, than yeah, the I think if he, like if he, he, he's obviously running at the weekend probably against Grange Clare West, um, and you know, like if he wins that, you know, even if he doesn't, he doesn't even have to win to be, you know, as long as he runs a really competitive race, I think he's a player. Like you have to remember, he's only had two starts over jumps, full stop, no hurdling, straight over fences. Um, he was obviously very good and very well back to Christmas. Now, what did he beat? Zanier was making his chase debut, he's not really bred to be a chaser and Manila Cocooner was having his first start in over a year, he needed to run badly. So, you know, what did he really achieve? But I'd say the potential there is fairly big and the potential for him to improve is fairly big and he'd be maybe the one I'd be more looking at. Okay. Like if you're going 9-2 factor file and run no bet versus 9-2 Ginny's Destiny and run no bet, I'd probably take the chance on factor file because I think if he gets run over the weekend, he probably won't even go to Cheltenham. They might just go to Fairy House or, um, or even just wait for Punchestown. It used to be the Powers, now the Ryanair, now it's something else. I can't even remember. Yeah, yeah. the old Novice Gold Cup yeah, there. The Novice, the Novice Gold Cup, yeah. Good and, race uh, yeah, do you know what I mean? And if he wins this, obviously, you know, if he wins at the weekend, then he goes to either this, the Brown Advisory, be challenging for favouritism for either. Mm. I get the feeling you're not Gaelic Warriors' biggest fan. Good, good horse, but just, yeah. Um, it would concern me to go in right a bit. And there are some good horses in there. And again, like, even look at the makeup of the race, he's gone out in front really in his race, hasn't he? Jeez, Desi's going to do the same thing. And just, yeah. And of course, from the trading room perspective, do you have a plaque with him and a little picture from when he got beaten, that Boodles? The like, Boodles? Yeah, thanks very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah good man, JP, JP with JP, Brazil. JP, getting you out of trouble for once. Uh, the bookies, the well, bookies Brazil. ally. Well, Brazil, Brazil, they never win World Cups. So they're, yeah. always, they're always hiding. No, uh, like, um, yeah, I just I just think, like, of all the shorties, I was going through them this morning, I had to write, had to write a piece there about, like, 
favourites we were afraid of and favourites we were against or star price. So it's looking at going, he's the short he'd probably want to take on at is the moment. Is this piece going to be published in a, in a publication or is this for, for, for work? I think it's from a bookmaker's point of view for the Irish field or something. Okay. Uh, someone in PR got on to me to ask me, would I mind answering the questions to that? Okay. So I was just and you were doing delighted. that this morning. So I was just like looking at it. I was like, yeah, probably, probably uh, Gaelic Warby, would be the one I'd want to be against at okay. the short prices. Like, you know, the ones we're looking at, last time out, Constitution Hill, Marine National, Gallop and Deschamps. Like, what are the shorties are there? You're, you're putting up an ACA that I think some people are going oh, to be Oh, there'll be loads of people yeah, doing yeah, it. And one, can, one, one or two might be you, back in You can throw Ballyburn into it after the weekend, after you put <laughs> bowls up at Leopardstown. So I put you down for fact and file? I would tend to say, the more, like, I actually came down here saying I, I, I had no real fancy, but I'd say if I had to bet, I'd probably go fact and file, yeah. Okay. Look, obviously the three races, we can't decide the three that the lads talk about. It's not the three races you're getting stuck into right now, and that's that's fair. Yeah, you know, no, no, they're yeah, not. You're not going to get stuck it, into every race. I just, again, it's like, it's like you know, when I look for financial best, like, am I getting a much bigger price than mm. what I get if I wait to a week before the race? And with this, I don't think I am. Like, we have to mention Corbett's Cross. He potentially can end up here. He's got an entry in the City Oils at the weekend. I think he's Inter- going there, yeah. He'd go there. Hermes Allen will run there as well. Uh, he ran a cracker at Kempton, to be fair. So like he's a player too, um, so like yeah, I think whoever, whichever one wins that, would probably uh, launch themselves into the picture for this race as well. Like so, there's just a lot of unknowns, and I'm not confident enough in something to think oh, that'll definitely win its prep. You know, to say I need to have a bet in it now. Hmm. I Fair. think it's just one of the races where I'd be happy enough to sit and have a look at it the week beforehand and see is there any angle. That's okay. That's okay. We're only taking apart what the lad said anyway. Thanks for your company, Frank. As always, yeah, yeah. we made it through two episodes. Hopefully, yeah. it'll be third. Well, yeah. The old trifecta. The old trifecta. Fingers crossed, I will. Um, there are some from the horses, or at least there was on Tuesday night. Anyway, some from the horse mouth specials that the lads mentioned. That Tom absolutely nailed this week. Actually, to be fair, we did. Have, we did have a YouTube commenter saying we're very harsh on Tom on these specials. We shouldn't have taken the Mick out of so much. Well, to be fair, he is just reading them, so it's what he's been given might be incorrect. I'm Ron Burgundy. Yeah, right. <laughs> like to be fair, like that's literally um, what I'm But yeah, that's well. our job too, is to yeah. put the boot in when we get the chance. It's like, kind of, it? yeah, it is. Yeah, it's all between friends. Don't worry, uh, yeah, Tom yeah. is still our best boy. People are worried that yeah, Tom's well able to give it. Don't worry. <laughs> After the violence he initiated if, if, if last there was a fella who chopped the two legs from Monday in two seconds. He, <laughs> he's well, a- well able for it. Uh, we, we're still junior B. He's very much senior level. But do check out the Paddy Perry website for those specials. It's a really good one as well involving, I think it was uh, Gallop and Champ and the Marine National. Was that oh, the yeah. What's this? Twos to 11 and 4. Ooh, was that was that it? Was or was it Gaelic Warrior and uh, Gallop and Champ? I can't remember. I can't remember. I can't even remember. Now I'm butchering it. Yeah. I can't, they're really good. They're on that site. One, oh, that one, I remember but, um, War was going to say you're effectively getting whatever price um, the on the second leg. Gallop and Champ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, it did look very good and I've forgotten it. So I'm as bad as the man Just himself. Go look, they're there somewhere. Maybe I should have put it on the script. Uh, listen, always great to have your company, Frank. We'll be back next week. The lads will be back as per usual on. Actually, they must be recording on the Bank Holiday Monday, are they? I'll ask for uh, Director Rob. Will I get it? Oh, yeah, the lads are, are telling me we're working on the Bank Holiday Monday. They're working I hope they're on triple time. Producer Mark? Triple time. Yeah, fingers triple crossed. Time. Yeah, fingers crossed there. So they'll be back. It'll be out as per usual on Monday. N- neither of us are working bank holiday Monday, though, are we? I'm off. No, it's my Happy it's days. my wedding anniversary this weekend. Oh! On, uh, on Sunday, but I'm working for the Your DRF. wedding anniversary on Sunday of DRF, so... You can, yeah. And you're working. And I'm working, oh, yeah. What a romantic. Well, I couldn't get off. Um, we're a bit shy for staff, so I'm uh, calling for the two days. So I'm sure Jill's we'll delighted. And sure, oh, that is. excuse just but runs. But sure, come here. <laughs> We've had six of them already. She wants another one. Do you know? <laughs> well, is it the seven-year itch? Uh, watch out for seven that. Year watch, itch. watch out for the seven-year itch. She, she might be getting itchy. I was going to say, it seems to be the three-year itch with her and the four-year itch and the five-year itch. <laughs> she definitely doesn't watch this, right? <laughs> or listen to it. Uh, uh, we'll enjoy your wedding anniversary in work. Uh, do check out, or stay with the Pipe Pair Racing YouTube channel, but that punters panel is really good fun, as uh, Frank said, with Nina Carby, Ruby, and our own Joe Log, your colleague Joe Log, as well yeah, as Tom. very impressive. As per usual, we'll be back at the weekend with loads of podcasts, including myself and Fran Berry going over Dundalk, as well as DR. He had four winners on Friday. Uh, oh, Fran, yeah, and in that one, and his double one as well. Oh. Mustard he is at Dundalk. He'll also look at DRF as will Rory and Ruby 
and yourself. I'm You're on, on the podcast. I'm on weekend. Thursday to cover Saturday. Brilliant. Fantastic. Look forward to your company. Thanks a million for watching. Please do comment really nice things underneath this particular show and do subscribe. Ah, subscribe to the Paddy Perry oh, yeah, YouTube yeah. channel. Are you going to go into like, surely no, shouldn't no, we just no, no, subscribe? I'm not going to be Ruby Walsh on this. No, <laughs> one Ruby's enough. Thanks very much. Have a wonderful weekend at the DRF. Please hope you're going. Enjoy. Back a few winners. Do gamble responsibly. We'll chat to you next week.